Hi there, thanks for checking this video. I'm Jackson Felden. Today I want to show how you can implement Defender for Endpoint on disconnected devices. Disconnected devices, I mean devices not fully connected to the internet, like some sensitive servers. In this case, we can use proxy, and via proxy, we can allow those devices to still reach the cloud service in order to provide telemetry and in order to get all the configuration and get all the security as well. Initially, I will present two or three slides just to provide a bit of theory in regard to some key elements you need to know, and then I will dive into my configuration. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, here is my lab. I have two servers, as you can see, my first server is the server 2016.02. This is the, the server where I have already onboarded on Defender for Endpoint, and I have three different configurations. The first one, if this uh, server try to connect internet, like an end user try to surf on internet on any web page, basically nothing works. The only two connections I'm allowing here is the first one, is the server to connect the Defender for Endpoint portal to send all the telemetry. And the second connection I'm allowing to go via proxy is to get to basically download all the AV updates. Anything else the servers try to go out to the internet basically is not allowed. The configuration ID, as you can see, I have an internal IP, 10.1.1.222, and then the default gateway is the 2.0.2. My server has two interfaces, but I have no router, no configuration here at all that allows this server to, you know, try to do any ping or any surf on the internet. To do the, the configuration, I had to implement basically a proxy. There are a couple of ways I could, you know, do that. The first one would be using a transparent proxy. The second one using the proxy auto discover. In this case, I kind of decided to stick with a registry key because I want to kind of go deep into the configuration and show how you can do that. The fourth option is you could use the net shell command as well to achieve something similar. In my case, I'm going to use the registry key. I change, if I have good memory, two keys in order to complete my lab. Okay, here they are. The, the two configuration I did, the first one is if I go to basically to the local registry, software, policies, Microsoft, Windows, data collection, and then disable enterprise authentication proxy. Actually, I, if the configuration is already in place, you should set as number one. Okay, just set as one to make sure there is no authentication when Defender for Endpoint tries to go out to the internet. Or the good news is if you don't configure at all, you know, if you don't touch that parameter at all, basically is not configured means uh, disable. Okay, and this is what I have. Uh, what is my lab at the moment? I haven't touched actually this key. The second one I did, and don't worry, I will show in a, in a two seconds. The second one is I had to go to software policies, Microsoft, Windows, data collection, and then telemetry proxy server, and then of course here is the place where I need to specify what is my local proxy, what is the IP or name in the port as well. In this case, is to make sure this device can connect to the internet as an end user, you know, to serve to Bing or Google and so on, but all the data, all the communication between the device in the Defender for Endpoint backend service is still, you know, is still happening via telemetry and so on. Okay, um, that's the first configuration I had to do. The second configuration is in regards to the updates, because of course I need to make sure the devices that are not connected to the internet can still download all the Defender AV updates and, and you know all of those things. In this case, the key you need to change is basically the uh, yeah, software policy, Microsoft Windows Defender, and then here's the place you can specify again what is the proxy name or the IP address in the port. Okay, you could do that uh, straight away using uh, reg edit, or of course you could use the GP editor as well in order to do the configuration. Okay, it always makes sense, you know, for me to show how it works 
on the, um, you know uh, how it works anyway let me jump into my virtual machine okay just uh, keep in mind the name okay this server is uh, actually let me just type here okay this is my uh, my server server 2016.02 okay if i go back to the portal if i go in here okay this is my defender microsoft 365 defender if you are kind of new you know the way to get there is just you need to go into the security.microsoft.com and then make sure you go under endpoints and then go over the device inventory if i click in there now i just want to make sure my device is uh, working is you know fully let's say there is no problem in there if i select my server 2016 as you can see is active that's a good news is onboarded i want to show two or three things if i click on the server itself i now can double check when is the you know the last scene uh, i'm recording this video right now okay 10 p.m march the 20th and as you can see the last time when this device managed to go out and talk to the defender for endpoint portal was five minutes ago i want to just to show you know is working uh, if i go here you know check an alerts i've been playing already run some tests as you can see if there is anything weird or uh, happening on the server defender for endpoint will catch that and create the alerts if i go into the timeline again i just want quickly to show everything is updated and here yeah again you know 955 951 946 and the good news as well if i eventually need to isolate this device if something is happening and i want to kick this device out of the network i can just push this button and the other commands are part of the restricted app execution all the other commands are available as well even though this server is running behind a proxy i can force uh, antivirus i can collect you know a package for investigation or i could you know now click on the initiate a live respond or actually let me just click on the initiate and out in uh, automated investigation uh, what i found out here basically usually takes a couple of more seconds in order to initiate those commands on the server on the disconnected devices if i compare the timing uh, that it takes if i'm doing that uh, same procedure in a device fully connected to the internet anyway that's step number one i just want to show the the my server 2016.02 is here is fully populated is there is no delay in the communication all the commands uh, in here are available everything is you know updated uh, on purpose I haven't, um, let's say, installed the latest patch. Okay, and then if I go in there, again, I just want to, to show the system is still able to, you know, to catch saying, you know, the, the March update or the, the patch has not been installed yet. Anyway, I just want to show on the interface, everything, you know, seems, you know, really good. Now, if I go back to my virtual machine in here, you know, just to quickly type IP config, as you can see i have the ip address and there is no default gateway it means if i really try to go to just ping maybe you know uh, that proxy server uh, sorry that dns server you know as you can see it doesn't work if i try to surf on any web page let me just try here bing.com uh, i think i just there is a typo okay uh, bing.com yeah there you go as you can see it doesn't work if i try you know google.ie or .com you know is not is not working because the only connection i'm allowing via proxy is the defender for endpoint to send the telemetry and the second one is for the defender for endpoint to be able to pull all the av updates everything else is basically not allowed via the configuration i have implemented the virtual machine i'm using here to play as a proxy is my server 2012.02 you know i have the internal ip address to connect to that server 2016 and then i have a uh, <clears throat> basic default gateway to go out from this device if i try to go out of course you know everything works internet is working so on and the configuration i have implemented is via squid i installed the squid proxy for windows and to be honest i haven't changed the configuration 
I just double checked, you know, the my my internal network 10 is set as an internal network and I'm using here the DNS server for any query that must be done via DNS is 888 and 208 and so on. That's pretty much the default uh, configuration. Okay, that's done. Now let me just go back to my first VM. Another thing I want to show, just to, to make sure the AV is fully updated and there is kind of no delays on the, on, on the updates. If I go via PowerShell and type get, if I can remember the command, MP, uh, yeah, get MP computers status. Click on that. A couple of things I want to double check. The first one in here, is the anti-spyware signature last update again today the 20th of march and then whatever is the latest update again the antivirus signature yeah pretty much updated as well from from today the device policy last update yeah again today and the antivirus is fully kind of you know running as true everything looks good okay in order to achieve the configuration via proxy a couple of things I had to do, basically two registry key. Again, to make your life a little bit easier, these are the key, the three keys I supposed to change. As I told you before, the first key I didn't change because the default is already as disabled. Okay, that's done. And then the second one is if I go here just to kind of you know show you under the H key local machine and then software and then policy, Microsoft. Uh, and then over Windows, kind of, you know, getting there. And then finally, data collection. And then here is the place where I can or, you know, really need to, uh, sorry, let me just do a bit of zoom in here. Okay, uh, here is the place where finally I have the option to specify my telemetry proxy server. In my own lab is 1011. Two, uh, 202 and then port 3128. Okay, that's the first configuration. The second one is pretty much the same place, but then uh, under the Defender, the Windows Defender, in this case, here is the key. And that's, as I told you a few seconds ago, is exactly to kind of, you know, tell my Defender for Endpoint what is the way out in order to pull the latest uh, AV updates. Again, if I just do a bit of uh, zoom in here, okay, as you can see, Windows Defender, and then eventually one more time, and here is a proxy server, and then I had to specify in this case, oh yeah, don't forget, is uh, initially I just try the IP address straight away, you know, it didn't work, you must specify HTTP, and then eventually my internal IP, in the port 3128. That's pretty much, I believe, that's pretty much it. The configuration I did. Of course, if you're working a project with maybe hundreds of servers, dozens of servers, or thousands of servers, you know, to go server by server and then do the implementation manually via registry, of course, that really doesn't make sense. And then you can use System Center, Configuration Manager, or, you know, other tool in order to push this configuration. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I, what I wanted to share today, the way, let me just go back to my quick slide again. Uh, that's pretty much what I have implemented in order to allow my fully disconnected device. Okay, in this case, no default gateway, no internet connection for a kind of, you know, from an end user point of view, nothing basically works. And as I told you before, the only two connections I'm allowing here are the first one to make sure the my server or could be a Windows 10, any device is still able to communicate out to Defender for Endpoint to get all the, the, the updates from an AV point of view. And the second communication is to make sure all the uh, telemetry and everything is still working via, you know, my proxy server. In this case, I'm using a uh, squid proxy, but of course can be a Zscaler or, you know, whatever is the proxy server you guys are using. And that's pretty much it for now. Hopefully you enjoy my video. If so, please give a like, subscribe my channel, and hopefully I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.